yourself, getting the best out of yourself in mind and body. Um, okay, so I hope this talk um, be useful to it, something I said I'm very passionate about uh, in terms of kind of getting the best out of yourself. Um, in terms of thinking about the goal for this, uh, in the aim of this talk, there might be a couple of different type of people of you in the room. I'm not quite sure that we kind of talked to Grace. There could be a wide number of you starting up. There might be uh, the next Thomas Barr, our Olympic hero from Rio 2016, the athlete from my athletics club in, in Waterford and Ferrybank. Um, uh, could, could be signed in here, the younger version of self, teenager, uh, and was looking for a bit of inspiration and need, 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 needs a bit of buzz. We might have a um, uh, next Phil Healy, if you're looking right here, we might have some senior athletes here aiming to be the next uh, European finalist after a fourth place performance this year. Or you might be a coach to an athlete as well, like Shane here, Phil's coach as well, who is working with an athlete or a number of athletes and we're trying to get the best out of themselves and you're looking for a little bit of advice or motivation there. You might be part of an athletics club. Um, you know, the, 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 the volunteers, the coaches, support workers, the, 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 the staff that really are the kind of life and soul of our athletics community in Ireland, um, of which, you know, that provide the environment, provide the support, um, yeah, and, and, and the environment for, for, for people to get the best out of themselves. Or a lot of you might not be involved in athletics at all. You might be signing in. You might be like this guy, my, my friend Jack here, my school friend, uh, who's, you know, motivated and then sets goals in lots of different ways but uh you know maybe with some lockdowns recently and a little bit of setbacks or just in general just feel like you're going through the motions here's jack's pictured smoking a pipe you know and you just you just feel like you need a little bit more a uh, little bit of a kick out the bum you know to, to to get out and kind of uh, get after your dreams and ambitions and stuff as well so i hope this uh this talk will help those kind of people too so um i've kind of broke it up into three parts as i said it'll be about 40 or 45 minutes, uh, having you know, gone through, if I'm give or take a couple of minutes. Um, but I'll sort off just a little bit about me, because I appreciate lots of you won't have a clue who I am. Um, and you'll have seen Athletics Ireland kind of promote this talk. Um, so I'll talk a little bit, introduce myself. The central part of the talk is my tips for performance. And just basically what, what, what I deem um, kind of the, the, the top tips and kind of just performance and getting the best of yourself in general, um, kind of goal setting and stuff. And then at the end, because it is an Athletics Ireland talk, and I just want to talk about just, you know, if you're an athlete right here and now in the current environment, how might you kind of rebuild energy and really kind of get yourself back feeling good um, and on top of your, your, your game or your, your, your performance. Um, so a little bit of a disclaimer. So uh, as Grace said, I'm in Australia at the moment. Um, and if you felt sorry for me being here at 3 a.m. Uh, getting up to do this talk uh, in Perth, don't be. I've had an absolutely fabulous time so while it's been a really really difficult 2020 21 for a lot of people i've had a pretty um pretty awesome year to be honest uh it's uh there have been very little restrictions here um and, and i've been kind of out and in the sea and sun and sand and ch chasing sunsets and, and having a great time and the reason i'm saying this as well is i mean while i haven't but while i haven't experienced um for example the setbacks like the lockdown the restrictions kind of the this just a lot of more of the hardship is a lot of kind of the coaches and athletes and and general irish community have at home uh i definitely have experienced a lot of setbacks and disappointments and kind of heartbreaks uh, physically mentally emotionally in in life um and a lot of my talk today and the concepts and the tips are are kind of dealing with these setbacks and dealing with these kind of constant feelings of being knocked back of emotions and kind of thinking about how we really respond to those scenarios. So controlling what you can control when there's so many uncontrollables around you, which is really what it feels like at the moment when you're kind of looking at the news and, you know, and, and, or you, know, you, you guys are getting, you know, you're, you're, you're waiting and waiting and waiting and you probably feel like, God, I just can't control a lot of what's going on. But what you can control is your response to that scenario and, uh, you know, how, how you're deciding to see a situation. So we have more control up at that kind of thing than we think. Hunter. Uh, say again. Okay, sorry, no, I thought I heard something there. Uh, okay. Um, in terms of me, so my name's Niall Tui, I'm 31, and uh, why I'd be known to kind of, I suppose, uh, athletics and stuff is I, I've been an athlete since I was 14 or so. I was in Ferrybank Athletics Club in Waterford. I still am, although I've been um, in Australia for the last 18 months. Um, but yeah, would, 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 uh, 800 meters is my main discipline, would have been a middle distance, distant athlete all through my teenage years. I uh, went to school in Newtown School and competed with, with them. Um, I'm 
I've been Irish champion in, at schools level and university level under 23 and um, I have a national senior 800 meter title as well in 2014. And personal best today there as well, 47, you know, athletics people love stats, 47, 70 and 800 meter 14809. Um, and basically, you know, I, I've just, I've enjoyed athletics all, all through my life. Um, through his time. So after doing my, in terms of my education, I was in Newtown School in Waterford, uh, had a brief year, which I mentioned about in this, uh, in, a, in a moment in, in America. After that, I went to Providence College where I was studying maths and economics, um, but that ended quite abruptly for me. I had a very bad injury, and I'll talk about it, and I came back to Limerick and I did a Bachelor of Science, Sports and Exercise Science. I have a degree in Chinese medicine and medical acupuncture. Um, a lot of this kind of strive towards sports science and health and healing was all really kind of a, a motivation of mine to learn how to kind of get the best out of myself and, and, and learn how to help, learn how to heal. How can we improve ourselves as people, deal with setbacks? And I was kind of, in, I suppose, inspired by a lot of my own setbacks to figure out what was going on. And for the last, I suppose, 10 or 12 years anyway, I've been involved in a lot of coaching. Um, I set up a, a sports academy for teenagers in, in Waterford. Camp Waterford is a summer camp I've worked at since I was 15 and I developed a teenager component to that. So you see here just giving basically a week long workshop. We have up to 70 athletes or young sports people come through our camps each summer. And um, uh, and I need to deal with them. So very passionate about coaching, teaching, education, performance. I've, I've strength and conditioning coach, and I do a lot of hockey and and, and athletics coaching at home. So I'm um, very active in the in the kind of uh, performance and health and, and and coaching community. So right now I'm working as a doctor in in Royal Perth Hospital. Uh, so like many Irish do, uh, probably unfortunately really as well as it's quite a tough. Uh, system working in, in, in hospital home and uh, it can be quite hard as is, 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 is we come over here and and kind of you get to enjoy a lot of quality of life as well and it allows me to keep working full time in the hospital but to still also be able to get out and run and get out and do all the sports and everything that I love to which is really important to me is, is finding that balance um so uh sorry now in terms of kind of a lot of the motivation for this talk as well so this was the uh, I was a feature article in the Irish Runner in 2014. So just after in the top right hand corner, when I worked, won my first national senior title, Cahill Dennehy, the well-known Irish journalist, rang me. I remember afterwards, he's like, "Oh, Niall, you know, congratulations on you know the, the the senior title and talk about the race is brilliant. You know, great, great race, two minutes." And talked about tactically. And you see in the picture there, the yellow Carl Griffin who was my training partner at the time. Really good, close race between the two of us. And we were both being coached by James Nolan at the time. And talked a bit about the race and like oh great great and then Carl said oh yeah and you, you've been through a few setbacks haven't you like well, you, you were a very good junior and we, we haven't heard about you for a while so this was I would have been 24 at this stage he's like yeah yeah you're top you know one of the top Ireland's top juniors but it was the top kind of 800 1500 meter uh, junior at my age um, and I said but oh did you go to America or what kind of happened and I suppose we kind of got on from talking about that and it's like I've actually actually gone through a lot really and you know in the meantime since so I, I as an 18 year old, I would have been, you know, the best in Ireland, really I, 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 over eight, over 800 at one schools international. I was really, really thriving in the sport and developing at a good rate. And, uh, I, I, cho I chose to go to Providence college in America, went away, just full of dreams, full of hope and ambition and got an awful, awful injury. Um, we see the bottom right here. Um, basically I started, I, I, I won the, the Irish under 20, uh, 3,000 metres indoor uh, in, in Nina, the, the, the old indoor stadium, um, and ran a person best time, I think it was 8.28, and indoor on my own, it was really buzzing, buzzing, and within a few days after that race, I, I, I wasn't able to walk, and, and, and I, I was just struggling to put the pain, and I, I couldn't walk, and anyway, it started, it was almost a three-year um, journey of not being able to walk through a year in, in America, where I went to Providence, and you know, wanted everything and was, was, was full of ambition and dream and, and, and then uh, had this injury that's progressed and progressed and progressed and had this really rare nerve damage in my feet that required surgery and uh, I ended up being about six months on a, on a walking frame and in a wheelchair um, and, and pretty, pretty, it was unlikely I was going to run again. Um, so I lost my scholarship in America because uh, I was kind of cold, there was no light at the end of the tunnel and they didn't know what I'd be running again and, and stuff as well. So, 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 so I had to come home. And I suppose the message from all this, and the reason I mention this now before we kind of get into talk, is, is, is the idea of kind of success and getting where we want to go in life. And as a teenager, uh, I think I had, I had a lot of success. I, 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 I 
applied myself very diligently. Uh, I was a very hard worker uh, in everything I did. I, at the top here, I, I, as a 14-year-old, I, I, I got nine caps for Ireland in, in, in hockey. Uh, played in the European Championships as a 14-year-old, a very young member of the team. Um, was captaining the, the, the Munster hockey team then uh, the following year. And by the same time, I was doing athletics. And I, I was kind of progressing very nicely through that as well. I won my first national cross-country title, I think, in 2000. You know, five as, as a 17 year old and you know what schools international and and then celtics and and and, and these kind of things so i was really really achieving uh, achieving a lot um in school as well i was doing well academically and i think with looking at the image on the right uh in, in terms of my thought of success and i'd had little setbacks you know i'd had my shin splints and i'd missed two months and you know i had you know plantar fascia and your little overuse injuries and I, you know i'd had accidents and i i experienced the death of my best friend in school um really you know hard times and 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 and, and, and i felt like you know what like I, i've definitely got some physical talent you know i know i'm mentally very robust like i, I can deal with, with with you know with, with with bumps in the road and stuff as well and um and i knew i wanted i knew i wanted to be an athlete i was willing to to, to sacrifice to be the best i could be and so i really thought that this was, this was my strategy. say again Sorry, just go someone... make sure you keep yourselves on mute if that's okay. Thanks a million. Right, right. Um, no, so, sorry. sorry. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> I'll definitely get to a couple of questions as well if they're in the chat box as well. Um, I think it just rather than interrupting back and forth, it might, it might, it might be a little bit easier. Um, forgive me, I'm not as slick as some people might be in terms of uh, blending in and out of microphones and Zoom and stuff, but I think this would be easier. But um. Yeah, so I very much thought that this was the, the, the directory to, 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 to getting where I want to be, you know, what, what's going to stop me and uh, what's going to stop me being the best. I really, really, th you know, felt I, I can definitely be big in the Olympics. I can, you know, I, I'm, I, I can do this. Um, and in reality, if you look at that line towards success, rather than being a kind of straight line, and many of us going to know this, it, this is more kind of like the squiggly, windy, all over the place path that we, we, we often have to where, where we want to be. Looking at the top there, absolutely there's some days where you feel like you're flying and things are going really well and, and, and you're in a flow state and, and you know, you're, 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 you're happy in what you're doing, the, the decisions you make are the right decision and you're going. But what I, what I find, if you look at that little, like might have been a few little bumps in the road earlier on, but as an 18-year-old, I, I, just, I just got rooted, I got brought to a standstill. And as I said, I went to, I went to Providence College and I... I I'd, um, after kind of long talks with my parents and talking about, you know, going to America, I, I was accepted to Stanford, Yale, Harvard, like I, I, I had a lot of really good opportunities uh, going over there. My parents are very uh, academically focused and, 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 and there's been less, uh, there's been less kind of athletics push in the family. There, there were not really many um, sports people in the family before. So when I was after talking to them saying, no, 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 I want to go to Providence College. I want to, you know, I want to be a runner. I want to do this. I want to do this. They're, you sure not? Are you okay? You know, are you thinking straight? You know, anyway. But I said, no, that this, this is where lots of Irish athletes have been before. I know what I want. I want to be Ireland's next best athlete. And so this, this is what I'm going to do. Um, so signed that. And quite shortly after that is when I had this foot injury that just became the, the biggest debacle that, 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 I think I was yeah, 20, 28 months unable to run at all. Um, the pain in my feet just got so excruciating that, that I, I, I mean, Dave McCarthy, another Irish athlete, was over there. I remember, I, I, I'd like if I was taking oxycodone to try and keep the pain away, I'd wake up in the middle of the night. If I hadn't taken my tablets, like I, I'd be vomiting with the pain. I wasn't able to stand for more than 10 or 15 minutes. It became a really severe health risk. And I ended up having to see a kind of a peripheral nerve surgeon in, in Baltimore over in the States and, and try and get my nerves were kind of wrapped around the bone and, and my ankle. I just had to get them released as a kind of a health um, issue at the end. So I just, I just remember that just at the time of my life going from, you know, going to America, like full of dreams, like here I am, like using athletics as a way, like to express myself and get the best of myself and just loved competition, loved the excitement of, of championship performance to, to just being helpless and just that feeling of just being like, what is going on? And, and I remember a couple of those times before, during, between the surgeries and recovery, come back, I, I, I tried, you know, I tried to, um, I was, I was the top ranked academic freshman in, in the college at the time. And I tried to stay in the college, like on academic grounds. And it was like, oh, it was kind of being, it was kind of being, you know, blocked or wasn't really able to do it. And I, I ended up kind of coming back to Ireland and I was just like, oh my God, what's going on? But I really, really, and if you look at this little squiggy line, I just remember those moments where 
when you're having a setback like that and you just feel like you're helpless and you're and you're like what's going on and you really have to like break yourself down you start asking yourself the real questions like like what do i want what am i doing here what okay i'm, I'm in this situation you can't understand it but what are the things i can do to improve my quality of life now how do i get myself back to where i was what can i do better you know i'd ask myself about you know really want to run again i really really want to run again okay what can i do okay i'm not able to run at the moment what are the other areas like my you know my my, my nutrition or what, what about my you know my self-belief and i started reading a lot of books about like you know psychology and i was like right if i can get myself back and got me really passionate about if i do get back i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna really take advantage of this as well and I came back and I, 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 I started sports science in UL. I moved in with Thomas Chamney, who was an ex, he was a Beijing Olympic athlete. He'd just come back from the Beijing Olympics and 800 meter runner. I moved in with him in Limerick and I just was like, right, what do I need to do to just build this environment and performance? And there's so many people that are helping with me. Um, Mark Harrell, the Irish ex, kind of five, he's the five, sorry, 5,000 meter record holder. He, um, he was over in America at the, at the time and looking after some Irish athletes and talked a bit about inspiration, getting yourself back on the horse and stuff. And, why did I want to get back? It was, it was, it was for this. It was for getting back into competition championships, being in the mix. I mean, even me looking at these kind of photos now, back when I was competing, I, I just love it. I, you know, the nostalgia of just getting a chance to, 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 to express yourself, those little, you know, tight championship races. Um, for me, getting a chance to race against like Mark English, who I came second and third behind multiple, multiple times. Um, the bottom here, Carl Griffin. I remember I lost by a hundredth of a second from that night. Just these little like, chances of like, okay, okay, like these, these small things, how do, how do I improve? How do I get the edge and stuff? And athletics is just such a beautiful sport for that as well. That like, you know, when you put in a lot of work, you get a chance to, 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 to show off what it is. And that's what I wanted. It was a, was a chance. I, I didn't want at 18, 19, 20 for my, the story to be over. Um, and so that, that's, that's kind of my story and stuff as well. Like I did come back I and mean, these are all, you know, I won a national title and I was multiple medalist um, at times and, you know, got my personal best times. And I've enjoyed a lot of really, really good years in the sport. Um, really, really thankful for that. But what do I think about this kind of like talking about this setbacks or time or where you're not really sure what's going on is, you know, the current situation for, for, for you guys or for anyone, you know, you look at all the newspapers, the headlines, and some of these are stolen from British newspapers as well as Irish ones, but, you know, exams, acts, deaths, or, you know, the army, death is all around us, follow the rules, you know, this is going to be damaging the economy, it's worse than the 2008 crisis, um, and in, in, in power with deaths there, the European cross-country in Dublin cancelled due to COVID-19. There's a lot of doom and gloom, and athletics, and um, I'm most of you, and maybe, maybe not all of you, most of you are probably involved in athletics, you know, it, it's a tough sport to, 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 to succeed in, you know, it requires a lot of focus, a lot of setbacks, and, and, you know, this is a lot of doom and gloom and gloom and negativity to be feeling as well. And a lot of, like, the important thing is, is, is how do we look at this situation? How do we respond to this situation? You know, when you see that, that, that and, and you guys, when I say, how will you respond? You've been responding to this situation for a long time. But, you know, we, we, we lose that ability to express ourselves. We lose that social outlet. We, you know, we lose a lot of things that we realize were important for us. And I suppose this little, uh, this talk is, is, is talk about the different ways that we can actually kind of take control and, 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 and build ourselves back up. So really happy to hear that in Ireland you know, lately, um, and I'm sure in Europe in general, um, there's been a, you know, there's a, a easing of restrictions and, and people are, are going to start being able to kind of get get out and about and go back and this is you know the the, the, the positivity people would see this as opportunities and a chance to kind of really get back and, and, and do things so uh yeah so this is the main part of the talk here is 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 these performances and how do we get the best out of ourselves um in terms of building our best self in physical energy um our physical self our emotional side, our spiritual side, and our psychological side, and all this building towards peak performance. I see you have a nice little uh, yellow squiggle there. No, peak performance. Um, Grace, are there any questions at this stage or anything coming in the chat? I've lost my chat box here. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything at the moment, no. Niall. Perfect. Okay. I hope I'm not talking too fast. It's exciting to be uh, chatting to Irish people, <laughs> oh, you know, back up again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the main part of this talk, building your best self. So, how to get the best results towards peak performance. Okay, so a couple of tips here. Um, so firstly, uh, I call this the, the, the framework, the foundation by which everything is built. So you have to have the belief of a bumblebee. And some of you might've heard this kind of, I suppose a little fable or narrative before. Um, and it's about goal setting and it's about framework, your framework and not limiting yourself at all. So I really remember um, 
in 2005, and I can still remember it, my, my coach at the time, Jer Jerry Deegan. I remember him coming, he's an ex um, the most, uh, marathon champion, Irish champion, cross country runner, and he was your coach in Waterford, a uh, very good Irish athlete. He actually went to Providence College as well. But he's, um, I remember him coming to us on this Monday night, and it was early on in our cross country season, and we're like freezing cold. We'd done like, you know, kind of 10 mile run and a couple of strides and we're all there as 15 year olds and you know gloves on we're kind of having a cup of tea afterwards and a kind of bit of recovery snack and stuff as well and uh, he comes over and he has this printed sheet it was like think like a bumblebee and train like a racehorse and it's like oh what's this and he's like guys you know this you know this is us this year and he gave us this um this sheet and and he read it out to us and i can still remember it and i still have the sheet and I still use it here as well. But this is the story, and I'm feeling generous. I'm going to read it out for you guys. Um, so, not long ago, NASA scientists found interest in the bumblebee for its flight abilities. They extensively examined the bumblebee to determine how such a hairy, round torso could be lifted by a relatively tiny wingspan. After much study, they finally made their conclusion. The bumblebee is incapable of flight. Fortunately for us, this scientific deduction was not told to the bumblebee, which happily and effortlessly continues its flight. The bumblebee thinks it can fly, so it does. The power of positive mental thought. Think like a bumblebee. And this is so important because, you know, when we're younger, we, 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 we think we can, oh, yeah, we can do anything. We get told a lot, oh, you can't do that. And people, oh, no, 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 no. And, 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 and and people express their kind of doubts on it. We, we begin to think, oh, no, we can't really do that. And we kind of, we lose a bit of self-confidence. We get bumps along the way. If you want to get the best out of yourself, you have to think big. You have to have that, that bumblebee mindset of, yes, I can. Yes, I can do things. You know, I feel I have the ability. Every one of us has the ability in, 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 in ourselves to do something special. And you have to give yourself that opportunity to believe that you can do that. Because um, if you don't, I mean, you, 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 you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot before you even start. You're not allowing yourself to have a, um, you know, a chance. And so thinking like a bumblebee really is the, the, the mindset. Uh, I remember giving this talk in a, in a school before and, and uh, one of the kids after was like, so are you saying that I could just go up on the roof now? And if I say, if I think I can fly and I go off the edge and I say, I think I can fly, I believe I can fly and I jump off. I'll be okay. And I was like, oh, oh look, 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 maybe, maybe, maybe don't do that. You know, and I was like, obviously, look, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a story and it's a mindset, but it, it's a really important um, avenue. So thinking like a bumblebee is the first thing towards high performance, getting the best of yourself. Don't, 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 don't be, don't be the person that puts yourself down and says you can't do it. Once you're thinking like a bumblebee, uh, step two in the performances is being a leader and leading by example. So I love the Mahatma Gandhi coach quote, be the change that you wish to see in the world. So ask yourself, what are the little things you can do to improve your performance and improve your quality of life? You're in control. Remember that. Be a leader and lead by example. So we talk about there is uncontrollable stuff around us, but often very much our, our, our happiness. And people say, like, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. You're in control of your own destiny a lot of the time as well. And in terms of that, we talk about the three decisions that control your destiny. So your decision on what to focus on, you know, what is it you want? And I think that times of setbacks and when, when, when you're, you know, unsure yourself and be it an injury or, or be it a, a lockdown scenario or struggling at home or like, you know, struggling with relationships, friendships, work, job loss, you know, you're like, well, what's important to me? You know, like, you know, like, cause you're you and you're, you're in control of you know, yourself. What, what's important to you? What, do, what does that mean to you? And now I've decided about what to focus on. What do I need to do? to get where I want to be? What, what, what do I need to, to change? What, am, I, am I starting my days right? Am I, you know, what, what can I actually do better? And it's really important to have this introspection and reflection. And, and you know, I do see these setbacks as opportunities to, 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 to figure that out. You know, we need to figure that out. If we want to keep moving and we talk about that little squiggly trajectory up to kind of bring yourselves to a better, more fulfilled or happy place or successful place, you need to have setbacks and so that you can figure out like, do I really want this? I did, I, and if I do, well, you need to be the change. You need to get out there and make those changes and be the person that, 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 that allows yourself to do that. You know, don't, well, don't wait for the person around you or someone else and stuff as well and, you know, follow on. You be the person that makes that. So think about how this affects you in the present. Obviously, I know there's a variety of people listening here. So, so um, you know, how does this affect you as a person? What, what are the things you can do to change? Be, 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 be a leader. What you put in, remember what you put in, you get out. 
Um, so I like this idea of thinking about decision making upstream. So imagine a river coming down and you know you come to a fork and there's a left way or there's a right way and you choose and one's kind of a slightly better route. You choose the right way, it's better or you choose the left way. And if you've gone right and it's better, then you come to another fork and there's a kind of a, a good decision or a bad decision. You make a good decision as well. You can end up in a much different destination if you make a couple of these good decisions along the way. And that might be you know, how you start your morning, um, you know, what you eat for breakfast, uh, be, being positive and being cheerful to those around you. Um, you know, if you make a decision and you're, and you're, and you're, and you're grateful and you're, you're nice to someone during the day and they in turn treat you nice back, that end, you end up, you know, putting yourself in a better trajectory to being, you know, um, maybe malicious or, or a bit kind of um, uh, cold or sharp or not understanding in a scenario and stuff as well. We can really put ourselves in a bad way. And, and this is the same making decisions about performance, you know, choosing the, um, you know, the, 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 the getting out and doing a training session or, you know, eating the pizza. I don't know. Um, and this starts, and it, this became massive to me actually when I was in my intern year working in Cork Hospital um, two years ago uh, as a doctor, as a kind of junior doctor. I just remember, I just, I just, so overworked uh, and and so tired and and, and you you're working about 70 hours a week and you're just crawling yourself out of bed and pulling yourself out of bed in the morning and I remember I came in a couple of times and I was just irritated and disgruntled and I was like oh god this is so hard and, you know I went around oh like we're wrecked and god god god, god. I used to just do in the morning I'd have a warm shower and I'd just go there and do a couple of deep breaths and I'd be like right like you have two choices today Niall you can whine you can complain i lived right beside the hospital i just walked into the hospital like you can whine complain you can feel sorry for yourself you know or you can you're awake now you're you're, you're going to work that's 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 what's happening you know this is where you are like you know get some good breakfast go in smile say hi to people on the way in you know when i'm getting my coffee in the cafe go and like chat to the person develop like focus on the little things positivity positivity and then just deal with the the, the, the shit when it comes, you know, and, and, and just try and have yourself in the best mindset scenario. When you put in a bit more to your day and put out positivity, you do get a lot more out of it and you find that you're, you're able to deal with these little um, setbacks and stuff. So there's a, so thinking like a bumblebee uh, and then being a leader and getting after and leading by example. So the two main, very kind of mental, psychological things um, about really uh, achieving what you want and going after what you want. Number three I have here is your support, your environment, or your support structure. So I have in the top right here, your kind of stereotypical grandmother. That's nice, honey, no matter what you've done, you know. Oh, I've just, it's okay that you've, you know, done lots of drugs and robbed a bank. You know, you're, you're still my grandson or, you know, that, that, that kind of scenario. So you want to surround yourself, surround yourself with supportive people um, and they look after you. So keep away from people that try to belittle your ambitions. Spend time with and surround yourself with supportive people. And this is really, really important. Um, I think in athletics as well, and something I really learned about when I came back to, to, to Ireland as a 19 year old is how to create your, your positive, you know, a positive kind of working supportive environment that allows you to go after what you want, because not everyone's going to understand you and your ambitions and stuff as well. And you got to realize that those that really love you and support you do want to see you fulfill yourself. And, 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 and that's important. And, and, and you know, um, if I did they say if you see the picture here me and my my, my parents and I believe my dad's uh, listening in here in fact I heard him talking to start so hello mum and dad but uh, they say that one of the biggest things in terms of uh, achieving success is uh, choosing your parents wisely um, so uh, lots of lots of lots of athletes with you know will, will find memories of the, of the parents supporting them along the way be it you know those lifts to training to school giving them the opportunities to try out sport and new things um, and, and, and and that's so true on my end but even those people that don't have that family support structure you know of tricky environments but that often it often makes them a lot tougher as people that's like an early setback where they have to figure out okay i don't have this support structure at home how do i go about surrounding myself in an environment and that's a big for young irish athletes in, in terms of going to university this is a huge thing you know wh wh where do i go or if it is a university versus you know, uh, you know, a job or going into work early, what's the best environment um, for, you know, for getting the best of yourselves? For me, when I, I had a little bit of a kind of crossroads, I had another injury in my, in my mid twenties or early, early twenties, my mid twenties, I had a real bad hip injury. I was out for another 18 months. I, I've had a lot of injuries. Um, James Nolan became my coach in 2013. So I was ex, ex um, Olympic 800 and 1500 meter runner. Or he tells me actually it's never an ex-Olympian, you're always an Olympian. But anyway, Olympic 800, 1500 meter runner. Um, and he became so important for me in terms of in my mid-20s when maybe I could have kind of taken athletics a bit more casually. 
reminded me about getting into a really good like performance environment if you see the bottom left he used to bring us over to south africa where he used to train competitively we used to go and spend our christmases there at high altitude and then and, and doing training and really important part of my support structure was getting into a group like that with a kind of a, you know, the leader and someone who's just positive and reminding you that like you know you have what it takes and this is what we need to do and on the right here david mccarthy one of my best friends one of ireland's best middle distance runners over the past 10 years such a good sports structure over, over the over over the, over the last couple of years as well. And I think of those um, weeks when I was in hospital and in, 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 in court or working hard, working hard. And sometimes I go home to my family and, and, and allow myself to be, be nurtured and pampered there. Or I'd um, I'd, I'd be straight down to Don Garvin to David, and, and we'd just be just talking about you know just um, how we get the best of ourselves. We're relaxing. We go out for a nice run. We do the right thing. We eat some good food and just it's just such a reset and, and being able to surround yourself with these people realizing what environments and what people are good for you in allowing you to grow um and yeah i talk about college is a huge thing you know like in, in terms of the housemates that you live with and stuff as well it, it, it's it's pretty important so having a nice support structure if you want to get after what you want um and i know uh that's probably been a very tricky thing recently in terms of lots of very hard long strenuous lockdowns is while you have, you know, Zoom and phone and Skype is, is, you know, sometimes not being able to be around those people that, you know, make you feel better. You know, there's people that you can just, you, you go in and you're kind of, you feel a bit doom and gloom and you come out and you have a chat with them and suddenly you're buzzing with energy and you're, and you're, you're feeling great. You know, uh, but Jerry Deegan, one of my, my first coaches, he had this, he has this amazing ability that I, I, could, I could go into and be like, you know, oh yeah, I have sore leg and I'm not feeling great and stuff. And he just start talking about like, you know, the story of him and John Tracy, like, absolutely hammering each other in some training session and you know and having something again you're just keeping at it and they're you know at a, amazing stories and you just be you come out of there and you're just jumping out of your skin you're like yeah you know i, you know, I want to hear more and i want to get out and run and stuff as well so people have this great energy and what I, what I often try to remind myself is to try and have that impact on other people that that i'm around as well you know be be the be the positive person in the room be the be the person that that lifts the spirit and stuff as well this would be really important when people are touching base with people after coming out of, of, of lockdown and stuff, you meet up with your one friend and stuff, you know, make a real big effort to, 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 to be that more positive person, to be, to be a good influence. And on realizing who you should be around is really important to, to, to getting the best of yourself. So your support structure and your environment is so important. Tip number four, and I have six tips here in total, and then we'll go on to, uh, kind of a slightly newer or another concept but tip four here is sleeping and resting like the best rest like the best so sleep just it's the most productive thing you can do I, I, it's so undervalued um by a lot of people a lot of people do I, I think a lot of performance athletes if you look across all sports and disciplines um they realize that like sleep is right up there and they're like priority of things that need to be done so seven seven to nine hours um, closer to nine hours being better is like this optimal for recovery, both your 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 mental and uh, re regeneration, your physical regeneration as well, and allowing you know organ repair and recover, getting mental clarity, and then just feeling happier and better in yourself. There's a study at kind of a stance. It's fairly, I think it's 2001. Quite, or I can't remember when. It's quite an old study. This the Stanford study on basketball players, and uh, it's just quite a well kind of reference or cited one. It's where we had this. You had an intervention group and a control group. And so groups of basketball players within a team and one group were then kept their same sleeping habits and the other group were over a period of time increased their sleep by two hours per day some by napping and some by ex extended sleep at night time and the results from that were, were you know that those players that slept more their speed increased by five percent their free throws were nine percent more accurate they had faster reflexes they felt happier and i remember we were reading these things and be like god like i think I, I looked it up and if i when I was an athlete, if I was 5%, if, if my personal best over 800 was like 5 or 6% better, I think I'd be world record holder. I'm like, oh, maybe I just need to sleep more. You know, and it, it just, it's, it's, it's not even a 1%. Or sleep is just so important. Um, a really good book here. I've, I've just put a peak performance um, on the bottom left uh, by Steve Magnus and Brad Stolberg. Um, they have a real good chapter on, on, on I think, chapter five, rest like the best. So as well as sleep, uh, they talk about this equation a lot in the middle here, stress plus rest equals growth. And often we're very good at being able to push ourselves and do the hard training and then and, and go, 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 go. But in order to grow and go back, you have to realize that rest comes part of that. So there is sleeping as one thing, but it's a really important thing as, as 
you know, if, if, you're, if you're an athlete who's kind of developing or, or growing yourself or your coach or you're creating an environment is to, and, you're, and you're planning a program or anything, is to realize that rest is so important and different athletes need a bit more rest. And also appreciating that it's not just the physical training. So, you know, there'll be athletes that are going through exams or, um, you know, a stressful period and work where they're working a bit harder. Or there's like, there's an emotion, there's a, there's a you know, it could be a tragedy or something or, or, or something like a friendship um, law or so, something bothering at home. And, and, and anything that this all takes energy, you know, like, like, like you know, mental energy or physical energy and training and stuff. And so we have to learn how to, to, to rest and recover better and realize what's, what are good ways for us to, to do that. Um, the stress plus rest equals growth. On that kind of resting um, idea as well, I think a really good, something that I've kind of slowly and surely been learning is, is what are the signs that you're maybe kind of stressing a bit too much and, and not resting enough? And then these are kind of, often our bodies will give us little signs, but this little photo here about the, with the little kind of red area at the edge of the, of the lip, there's a kind of medical term, it's like angular stomatitis, but basically before I ever even knew what that was, and it's usually called the kind of vitamin deficiencies and stuff, is um, I used to get that, and that was a real early sign to me, um, even my mum used to say to me as well, I was like, that I, I started to get run down. That's an early sign. If I combine that with being a bit kind of anxious or irritable, not sleeping as well, maybe like waking up early in the morning or not getting to, not getting to bed as quick, and I started getting these little, this, you know, little red area. That's kind of a sign that if I keep going the way I'm going and I don't change something and 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 and, and allow a bit of rest to myself, I'm going to break down and I, you know I'm going to be properly sick and I'm going to miss out and do the things that I want to do. So learning about these warning signs of ourselves, this kind of journey within of knowing your body and knowing yourself. And I read this little info infogram uh, on the right here, types of self-care from Dr. Mark Rowe, who's a, who's a, a doctor uh, and inspirational speaker. He's a, I, I did my GP placement with him as a medical student as well. And he just talk, talks about the different types of um, self-care. So you have your physical and your sleep, walk and stretching, healthy diet, rest, your um, emotional, social, and your spiritual. Often alone time what's we need, is what we need. Often a bit of social is what we need. And you know, learning these ways to kind of look after yourself. Epsom salt baths are a massive one for me. They're kind of a magne magnesium baths and then just lying in and calming down the whole environment. I'm someone who will just be go, 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 go. And I'll just keep going until either I break down or I realize that I'm go, 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 going and that I will not be able to sustain this and I have to rest. Um, good sleep hygiene. We, we've probably heard of stuff before, stuff like, you know, turning off your phones earlier, kind of dimming the lights, creating a nice sleep area, calm, herbal teas, avoiding caffeine. These things allow you to rest and recover and are really important. Often the, the, the best athletes, they don't just train harder, they rest like the best. Um, and this is something is kind of one of the biggest lessons I think for, for kind of developing inspiring athletes is, is learning how to rest. This is a good little lesson. So this is, I think 2017, I was in Kilkenny Hospital and I was working as a, as a medical student there towards the end of my medical training. And uh, I remember, uh, so I was, in, I was in the hospital and it's when I first came across this acronym HALT. Medical people love acronyms and any way to shorten something. And it's a lesson in bringing your best self to what you do. I think I'd gone, it was like a Wednesday and I, I worked for a couple, I got worked, you know, I'd gone my, my student placement, I was in the hospital for a couple of hours on a Wednesday and came home and straight away drove up to Athlone that evening where the AIT International, the indoor meet was on and I was, I was, I was in a 600 meter race and I'm really excited for it and I came up and I was smashing the caffeine, getting going and boom, 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 yeah. ready. And uh, I, and I was, um, I was ready, 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 you know, ready to go and did the race, a 600 meter race and, uh, you know, went for it and did, did well. I think it came third in it behind, you know, two very, very good athletes, an American and, a, and an English guy. And, uh, you know, finished the race and I was bumping. I was like, yeah, that was good. That was good. Driving back. And I remember, God, I was like, you know, it was 1 a.m. I got back to Kilkenny. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm in, I'm in hospital early in the morning. And I just couldn't get to sleep. And I was wired afterwards and tossed and turning. Got about 40 minutes sleep. Came into hospital the next morning. And uh, I was on a surgery placement at the time and stuff. And we were talking and there was this surgical tutor called... Um, tutor as well he's a ex um i think breast surgeon he, he, he had an injury to his hands so he kind of changed into medical education and stuff but uh we're doing a tutorial with us to bedside and he was saying these questions and he was putting us on a spot and quizzing us and i was just blurting out wrong answers and you know regurgitating just all you know rubbish like and stuff as well and he he stopped the whole thing he's like niall like what, what's wrong with you like as in like you're you're 
this isn't you like you're 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 getting everything wrong like like you you can't you, you can't be coming in and like you know being like this kind of thing basically he's like, he's like, like you just want to know he's like what so he pulls us away and like i basically said look i i barely and i i, I was racing last night and you know so they're like, oh. ah, a real calm italian voice he's like you need to halt and i was like okay <laughs> you know what's that and he's like to halt is hungry angry late or tired and he said these are the four things that very often affect our ability to perform well and when we're feeling we're a bit like erratic or irrational or we're not responding well to situations you might be kind of getting into arguments or something like that as well or like like me just 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 tanking in a, in a kind of a bedside tutorial thing and just getting everything wrong and you know i was definitely hungry i think i'd missed my breakfast that morning because we've been trying to get a last little like a couple of minutes of sleep i'm very tired I think I was late rushing into work. I don't think I was angry, um, but I was really, really off form. And he was like, whoa, 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 like you need to like look after yourself, like stop. And he sent me home early that day. And, and I remember being like, oh, I was like, I was so grateful. I was like, oh my God. And I was able to have a little nap and I went for a little kind of easy jog in the, in the fresh air that afternoon. And I think I, you know, I had a little, little bath as well and, and, and just did some stretch. I was like, I'm okay, I'm, I'm back. So just remember, hungry, angry, late, tired, halt. Um, Sometimes, and it often happens, you know, I, I know in the workplace as well, I know in, in hospitals, people can really like, be, we, we have to be calling other doctors and physicians and stuff, and they, they just be tearing you down the phone, like, oh, getting angry for no reason, like, you're like, gee, you know, and you're like, you know, they're, 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 they're probably falling at the halt level, they're probably overtired, they're overworked, and, you know, sometimes that's why you get a bit of a, a bad attitude down the phone. But anyway, I thought it was a nice lesson um, in bringing yourself, best self to what you do. So. Uh, yeah, so that's um, your sleeping and resting like the best. And some of you might have other ideas or, you know, in terms of how you unwind. I love getting in the sea and the ocean. Is there somewhere that I just I feel very relaxed? Number five, fear of failure. So say your failures won't um, hurt you until you start blaming others. Take responsibility and brave life's challenges. We talk about thinking like a bumblebee and being leader. You have to be willing to risk failure. You know, think of that maybe like a, a junior athlete or a junior high performer that does really, it does really well and yeah, 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 winning, winning, winning. But then just can't deal with the, the idea of maybe being in like, you know, senior athletics and come back and suddenly they're, you know, they're, they're kind of a small pit fish in a big pond and, 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 and it's harder. You have to be willing to accept that failures are opportunities to grow. So we can pay a heavy price for a failure and a powerful obstacle to growth. There is no learning without difficulty and fumbling. If you want to keep improving, you must keep risking failures all your life. And the whole, as the old saying goes, if you don't challenge yourself, you won't change yourself. And this is really, really, really important in terms of getting the best of yourself. Another book I, I really like is, is The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Um, pretty simple fable about a Spanish shepherd and it's about kind of following your dreams and fulfilling your dreams. And they talk about the obstacles at the start that, that, that stop you from following those dreams. Um, that first one, impossible. And that's like the, the bumblebee idea is that like, you know, when you're, you're a kid and stuff and it's like, no, don't do that. No, you can't do that. And we get knocked down and down and down. When we're a kid, we think like, yeah, I can climb walls. I can do anything. But we, we slowly but surely get kind of beaten down and thinking like, oh no, I, I you know, I can't, I can't be the best and stuff as well. Love is an interesting one as well as, you know, lots of you who are listening here, you know, still have dreams, still have ambitions and doing that. You realize that lots of people don't go after that and kind of try to feel that they feel like, oh, I'll be, you know, the people around me, like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be, you know, sacrifice. I have to, I have to sacrifice friendship or, you know, you know, love to go and do that. Where, whereas, you know, they're not mutually exclusive things as well. And you have to realize the people that really love you and support you will be happy for you to go and, and see you fulfilling yourself because that brings a better version of you which you are then able to give back to them as a friend, a partner or, or family member or whatever. Fear of defeats is the same thing, fear of failure. And then fear of success, success is, a, is an interesting one. It's kind of like, it's kind of the guilt of the idea that, oh, those around me aren't succeeding. Um, so like, you know, loads around me aren't succeeding and aren't going after things. And there's lots of people in life that don't search for deeper meaning and don't actually like try to fulfill their dreams. They just kind of, yeah, they just sit there and they're like, oh yeah this is my life and oh yeah yeah whatever and stuff as well so some people kind of feel guilty then like oh what what why do i deserve to be you know achieving what i want and going after what i want when like lots of people around me aren't and and, and that can be a real real obstacle to growth as well so um interesting book anyway and 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 and, and some useful lessons but fear of failure is, is, is a massive one the michael jordan quote um 
just keep you pumped. Uh, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and I've missed. I have failed over and over and over again and that is why I succeed. So you have to ask yourself as a person, as an athlete, as a you know, co coach, performer, that you know, are, are you able to take step? Are you, risk, risking to, are you willing to risk failure in order to, to improve and get better? You know, do you see these as a threat or a challenge? There's like a threat mindset or is there a growth mindset? Yeah, you know, setback, what have I learned? What can I do better next time? In terms of that and setbacks and response, and this is the last little point on, on this bit, is just remembering that, that non-linear um, uh, line to kind of get in the best out of ourselves. There will be highs, there will be lows, and it's how we actually respond to that. Um, I like this little uh, you know, quote, this isn't a barrier, this is a hurdle, I can, I can leap it. And sometimes we do feel like we have a bit of a brick wall in front of us. We're like, how do I get out of this situation? You know, how, like, where to from here? What, what can I do? And so it's, you know, it seems unjust sometimes. You're like, what? Why am I deserving this? And you have to kind of change that around and be like, right, well, I'm here. How do I, like, forget to be about how do I make this a hurdle and how do I get over it? And I picture Thomas Barr here as well, our, our kind of, uh, Rio Olympic hero. Um, what a positive guy. Uh, in terms of someone who can physically uh, overcome hurdles and then also mentally as well. I, I remember chatting him the year of the, 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 of the Rio Olympics and he was injured and he had the same kind of hip injury that I'd had before, uh, kind of a, a labral tear and an impingement of the, of the hip and he was really struggling with it and he missed I, I can't remember if it was about 10 weeks and I remember during that time in the spring he was just out and I was thinking like god this is like you know it's April or May now and you know you know the Olympics are coming up pretty soon and like he'd been out not running for a while and I think he was I think I was buying one of his like homemade foam rollers his firm rollers off him or some, something like that I can't remember and he's over the house and he's chatting to him and uh you know just, just such a good man he he, he, he was Death, like he was obviously dying inside because like you know he wasn't able to run but he was like ah, I, I can't control that like you know he's like I'm doing all I can I'm, you know, I'm seeing this physio I'm going get the scan I'm doing that I'm working on this I'm working on my flexibility I'm keeping fit by doing this and he just pragmatically like was just like you know still smiling still positive like I just can't wait to get back when I get back I'm just going to go for it like you know just 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 buzzing and he just even though it's an awful scenario to be in, and he, he took, had this 10-week period off, came back, and he wasn't quite at his best, and he went through the European Championships, and then he lost the Olympics. You know, he came fourth and smashed the Irish record, 47 seconds for 400-meter hurdles. It was incredible, um, and just such a, a lesson. And I remember just thinking, like, that guy, that guy is good. That guy is good at that, dealing with setbacks and keeping that kind of positive energy and, 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 and just seeing, you know, he was learning from it and coming back, and, We've often talked about that kind of hip injury and how do you, what do you learn from it and how do you keep yourself healthy in that bay and stuff. So treat setbacks as opportunities to, 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 to grow. Yeah. Um, often they're for a reason and they're telling you something. So at 50, 45, 50 minutes here. Um, so that's the six points here. And I want to come back. Um, I'll, I'm pr pretty soon to finish. So Mike, are there a couple of questions coming in, Grace, or anything on the chat box? Yeah, we've got a few there now, though. Yeah, um, uh, anything that you think we should ad address uh, now or the kind of general ones that I could get to afterwards or what do you reckon? Yeah, I think we'll wait till afterwards because a lot of them are yeah. quite general. Yeah, no, no, that's a lot. Okay, so just another, another, just another few minutes, this last bit is an idea I want to talk about is, I, I think, like I can give those general tips and performance um, and general tips and you know, kind, of, kind of getting back and stuff, but in terms of building your best self, this area, kind of spiritual energy or energy in general, um, is so important and it's probably not it's not talked a lot about in kind of maybe sciencey talks or you know you know goal setting and stuff as well or people kind of go you know they maybe have a setback or get a bit like disillusioned with life and they'll go on a very kind of spiritual thing they go and the you know on a, a yoga and meditation and kind of can you're trying to find the other side of them and, and then it kind of calm and relax and stuff but understanding the how these all are like these pillars the intertwined in, in, in terms of building our best self is so important. And I want to talk a little bit about this energy and then about harnessing that energy and give example of kind of experience I've had in the last year. So in terms of building energy and purpose in what you do, which, which I like to talk about. So I, I have a, a degree in Chinese medicine and, and medical acupuncture as well. And in Chinese medicine, they call this energy within the body qi. Yeah. Or, you know, in general, we might call it like our energy, like our kind of our life source or like our spirit, you know, obviously religious people could call it spirit or in yoga, I think they call it maybe spirit or sh shakti, loads of different 
words for this inner energy and, and, and source. And what we kind of need to realize, and there's a book I read called The Untethered Soul, and which really has a chapter called Infin Infinite Energy. Uh, and it's this idea of understanding that we have an energy within us that's separate from like what we get from the outside. So of course we eat food and you know, we eat good food that has calories and how does it break down and gives us energy and that food breaks down and it you know, works and you get ATP and it makes all the little interactions in our, in our, in our body. Um, and sleep obviously helps us kind of replenish and recover and stuff. But there is this inner energy that's separate from all that, that if we allow to flow and to, to, to move well, we can actually, we get this flow state, can experience and, 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 and have really great moments and achieve very great things. I have to realize that everything in the body requires energy. Your, your thoughts, like thinking about some, focusing on something requires energy. If you have a thought and you don't really want it to be in your head and you're like trying to block it out and thinking something else, that takes energy. Emotions, trying to block emotions and keep, keep, keep going, that takes energy. All your actions, your physical energy. Think of your first day in a new job or work and stuff and just think that you're going in, you're trying to remember lots of things and focus, focus, focus. How exhausted you are when you come home from that first day compared to later on when you can kind of, you're, you're used to things. So all these thoughts and stuff, this all requires energy within the body. Um, and a really good example that they give in that book is like a kind of a simple example is imagine a kid um, waking up in the morning and he, you know, he's, he's eaten the dinner the night before and he's gone to bed, he slept whatever amount of hours and he wakes up and he's like, oh, and he, maybe he stayed up a bit late, you know, with his friends or sleepover or something, but he's like, oh, he wakes up and it's like, you know, his mom's coming in and calling and he's like, oh, yo, come on, Johnny, get up for school. Um, and he's like, oh, I don't, I'm, I'm wrecked. And you're just, just heavy and he feels crap. We've all been there. You, know, you don't want to get out and like, come on now, school, like, you know, brush your teeth, you know, put your clothes on. He's like exhausted and stuff as well. And then you just, boom, change the scenario. It's like, actually, change your plan we're going to Disneyland, you know, where we're booming. Like suddenly he's like, what? Like, boom, you know, you're, you're jumping out of the bed, like, whoo, you know, pack your bags. Let's go, 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 go. Um, excitement. Yeah. Excitement, energy. And suddenly, you, you know, you haven't slept anymore. You haven't had any more food, you, you, but you're able to change that. And you know, of course, is your nervous system and your, your fight or flight and sympathetic to different ways, but learning how to, I suppose, release this energy in the body is, is, is so massive. The other example would be, uh, Imagine someone going through a breakup, you know, a guy or a girl and you know, they're, they're in a relationship and suddenly get broken up and they're just, just so down the dumps and they're like, oh, and they're like, oh no. And they're just like, just wrecked and no energy to do anything. Like they have low mood. Um, you know, friends are inviting them to go out and do things. No, I don't want it today. And like, it's not like they're not getting calories. Like they're, you know, empty pizza boxes all over the house and, you know, just feeling groggy. And then, you know, suddenly that like, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, like, you know, calls them up. Oh, hey, like, you know, so I, I made a mistake. I'm so sorry. Like, I, like, you know, this was such a bad mistake. Like, you know, do you mind if we talk? Can I come over right now? Like, you know, I want, I want to make things up to you. Like, boom, you're, you're out of there. You're having a shower. You're jumping in. You're cleaning up your room. You're, you know, getting everything ready. That's energy, right? We, we, so we, ha we have energy with the body and, and, and how we think about things, positivity and stuff will really, really affect a lot of this. And I want to give you a little example of that um, uh, before we finish. So, I had a pretty big setback this year. So I said I've been in Australia the last year and a half. And uh, last June, so 10 months ago, I was um, body surfing, so like wave surfing in, at my local beach, uh, city beach um, here in Perth. And there's with big waves, it's winter here as well. And just, you know, these kind of dumping waves coming in. I was swimming, I, I do it all the time. I love it. Anyway, I was swimming in this wave. And whatever way it happened, it kind of like, there's these sandbars, like sandbanks and stuff. And I was in the wave kind of, like, kind of gliding along so not on a board or anything body and kind of pull my hands back and then stuff as well and the wave just suddenly hit this shallow water and stacked up and my fire went to the ground like and planted into the sand and the wave like took my legs and like hyper extender flipped them over the top and i just heard on the water this like <clears throat> crunching in my neck as i kind of flipped over and like immediate pain down to my shoulders i flipped over kind of landed on my feet and i was like oh I'm wiggling my fingers and so basically i i, I brought straight to the emergency department of the hospital where I work for well, to see my friend here on the right hand side, John, one of the, one of the many Irish doctors that are um, holding up the, the, the medical systems over here as well. Um, I basically I broke my neck, I tore ligaments in my neck, I ruptured the disc at, at C5-6, I had a big hematoma and internal bleeding all around my, 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 my cervical, my neck spine and so, so lucky not to be paralyzed. M mo most of the injuries that happen like this with this kind of forceful impact and flipping over end up with paralysis and, and, and speaking to the spinal surgeons in, in, in the hospital as well. 
I'm just 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 incredibly lucky that 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 didn't happen to me, considering the force and the the the, the kind of internal bruising and bleeding and the, the ligaments tears. Like I very very lucky. So a massive setback, and and, and while I've had many injuries before and and all that kind of stuff, and every chronic overuse injury I think you could ever happen. Hurting your neck is a, is a scary, scary thing. And I, I, I didn't have to get surgery, but I, I had to wear this neck collar for, for what was meant to be eight weeks, I've written here in Italy, um, which went on, it was then 10 weeks and 12 weeks. They didn't want the neck to become unstable and you know, for me to suddenly kind of cause an injury and, 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 and hit the spinal cord. So obviously this is a huge setback. And the reason I'm saying it is that, you know, so I, and I, I'm, I'm a pretty positive person. I, t- I think I took it pretty well, you know, I'm, I'm Photos here. I might have the thumbs up. I was getting out and I was socializing, still doing the things I, you know, love doing, getting out, keeping smiles. Or people say, keep your chin up, man. I had no choice because I had a, a neck collar that kept my chin up. But in terms of, you know, knocking you back, I mean, try to get your nine hours sleep with the neck collar on. They're the most uncomfortable thing. So, you know, it, it did affect my, my well being and my ability. But, but, I, but I was pretty, pretty positive. And when I took it off, I wasn't allowed to lift any weights at all during that time or any sort of, um, you know, support, I basically wasn't allowed to lift anything over five kg. So I was really weak when I took it off. And that was a period when I got back, I was like, God, I can't, I can't move at all. Like I, I, um, I was trying to turn my head. I was going back to work and I couldn't, I couldn't drive. I wasn't allowed to drive because I wasn't able to look left and right. And I was really down and I, my energy was bad. I was like, I need to do rehab, but I couldn't get myself up in the morning. I was just like, I was just like, oh, I don't want to do this. And I'd get up before work and early. And I was like, oh no, I can't do this. And I was like, I need to go. So I saw this swim. I was like, right, this Rotnest Channel swim, this mad 20 kilometer swim I'd heard across, across this channel from the western coast of Australia across to Rotnest Island, which is 20 kilometers along this, this channel. Uh, area known for great white sharks. There's a nasty jellyfish in there as well. It's a real hot day. And I was like, that sounds crazy. I was like, that's what I need, right? So I was, I was like, I wanted this, I needed motivation for me to do my rehab and stuff. And this is the spark, and this is what got me going. Once I made that decision that I was going to do the swim, energy changed. You know, I had I had a bit, I had I had, a, I had something to focus on. I was like, right, well, I need to get this 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 right this 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 better. So suddenly the pain was like, of course I'm sore. I'm challenging myself. I'm going after what I want. I was signing up, you know, physios, getting a strength conditioning coach, getting my rehab. Early mornings didn't seem as hard anymore because you ha- you have a vision. You're like, I want to get better. I joined this group, the Pod Squad, this like lovely group that train at six o'clock every morning from Cottesloe Beach. And while lots of people around were like, what are you doing now? You're crazy. Like, you know, have you, have you, you should do it as a team or like a duo. You can't swim this. Like, you're not like a swimmer or non swimmer. Like, you can't do this solo effort. Like, you know, that's just great. Like, it's not a good idea. And, you know, people are telling my, my, my girlfriend here as well, like, you know, don't do it. Like, you know, no, like, stop. He's, don't do it. You know, and you have a lot of people setting back. I joined this pod squad and, you know, they're these like ripper Australian guys are like, oh, yeah, yeah, give it a go, mate. You'll be all right. Yeah. You know, just, just, just get in there. They, they just love, they get in the sea every day. They just live and breathe this stuff. You know, you get stung by jellyfish every morning. And, oh, you know, and you're like, you feel like crying. Like, oh, and the guys around you like, ah, oh, you know, come on, keep going. Three, two, one, go. And they're swimming again. And you're just, you know, everyone's comparing their war wounds, wounds afterwards from the jellyfish and stuff. And it's a change of mindset. You know, you surround yourself with these people that are like good energy and go, go, go. And that group effect and mentality is so important. And re- I think it's really important for people thinking, getting back into when clubs reopen up as well is, 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 is creating that environment to allow people again to, to flourish and get after what they want. And I just focus on these little baby steps. I had the big goal. Then it was, okay, how can I get better in my technique? How, okay, I'm, 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 I'm swimming at this pace at the moment. How maybe I'll be able to swim three kilometers and four kilometers and maybe I'll be able to swim six kilometers and all these little bit by bit steps. But the energy when you commit to something and you, 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 you make a decision and, and, and you, go, you, you go for it, you, it, uh, it, it changes the energy within you. If you're excited and motivated by a go, it's different. And, and we, we, that's why we have to find that little spark within ourselves. Um, it's very good. About the race itself, I mean, just the, I remember that my, on the bottom left there, my excitement on the morning of the race was just so big. I'd put the Irish flag up in the boat the day before, and you have a boat and a kayaker with you. Um, and I remember before, like, I was just so excited. I remember my old coach used to say about keeping the power under control. Like I just wanted to go and rah, you know, swim as fast as I can. But I'd never really done a, a big endurance event like this. And I mean, it's, it was eight hours of swimming, you know. Um, you have this feeding regime. You're not allowed to touch the kayak or the boat throughout the whole thing. And that kind of long event like that, I mean, you really get inside your head. Your head's in the water this whole time and you've no 
idea. I had a really great support team, like kayakers and, and, and a skipper in the boat. And, and, you know, we'd discuss feeding and how much fuel I used to stop every 20 minutes and just tread water and just kind of take some energy gels and keep going again. And we got some really bad conditions actually there as well, some bad currents. And I was like going backwards for a while. The first half was great and then had these awful currents against me where I like was just at a standstill. I think it took me like well over an hour to cover one of the kilometers at one stage, like just, just horrendous. And you have a lot of doubts. And I, I, I just, I, I, the voice in my head was going, okay, like well, I wouldn't be the biggest thing if you had to drop out and you feel crap and stuff as well. But I had so much energy going through me. I just built myself up over a while. And when you, when I think all athletes and this is probably some, some senior athletes listen to talk here as well, or people that, you know, have, have committed to a goal and got after something. When you commit to something for a period of time, it takes a lot to push you off that cause. And, 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 and that's why it's so important. People talk about kind of long-term goal setting as well. When you have a vision of what you want, and I really wanted to do this for myself. I really wanted to feel like, yeah, this is me getting over my neck. This is me like getting back in the sea, the place where I'd hurt myself. Like, you know, just all these things. I was like, I am doing this. And you know, you, that, that energy you can build up by, 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 by step by step, those little mornings and going swimming and doing the rehab, it really can build into something, something big. And the feeling afterwards when I finished, I remember crossing the line and I was a little bit slower than I wanted. I wanted to do it in about kind of six and a half hours. And my first half was on, on port. And then the conditions came in again, uncontrollable factors. What could I do? Just keep going, working on technique and stuff. Amazing. Um, friend support afterwards we had a great little partying afterwards and even if i wasn't happy to swim i think i would have even been uh, in and of itself pretty happy with the tan lines i got from uh, from the race so here's uh, my line from the swimming hat marked across my forehead inside of my face so i definitely got some minor sunstroke um eight eight hours of swimming in like 30 32 degrees heat sun beating down you're not allowed to wear a wetsuit either and it's a uh, yeah, pretty, 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 pretty big day, but I was pleased with that. And my final point here and my final kind of, I suppose, message is, you know, for, for people here who are in the room and no matter where you are. So if you look at these two ladders, the point towards a small step. So imagine that cliff at the top there. Like we think like thinking like a bumblebee and, and you know, being able to think big is like, that's, that's where we want to be. That's our vision. You got to kind of create a vision. What, what, what's, you know, what can you do to spark your fire and get your interest going and stuff? And this might be the challenge and stuff during lockdown is how do we keep people entertained and stuff as well. But no matter where you are, and you might have come back a little bit um, in, in the last couple of months, wherever you are right now, that, that's your starting moment. Whatever with the past and, and all that, here you are. Find ways to motivate yourself. And to what we call, I was chatting to Phil Healy's coach, Shane McCormick, during the week, and we were talking about this idea of winning each day. Yeah, find ways to win each day. These little small, small things if any of you coach like younger kids or anything, the ultimate thing you have to do with, 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 with a young kid when you're creating activity is, is allow opportunities for that kid to succeed. You have to alter the task to allow them the opportunity to, to succeed and feel that idea of getting sober. And adults, everyone, we're, we're, we're all the same. You know, we might say, oh, yeah, yeah, we're tough, but like we need to get that feeling of momentum of succeeding and stuff. So find ways to, to win each day. Like, you know, if you're, if, you're coding, if you're dividing training sessions, if you're getting back, if you're meeting up with someone, find a bit of a purpose, something that you want to get out of, of each day, you know, be it something really small. You keep adding those little things together and they can really um, lead you to a good place. And remember that, like, you know, I've been really impressed with Irish athletes that came out some of the high performance guys in the indoors and just did some massive performances and stuff as well. And, you know, these guys have incredible resilience, you know, just, just winning each day, focusing on the training and, and, and getting out there. And then that energy they're able to bring to, to a race environment when, 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 they, when they haven't been in it for a while is just phenomenal. So importance of baby steps. Um, set goals that allow you to grow. Think yourself, I'll embrace challenges and treat setbacks as, oppor or as, setbacks as opportunities to grow. And remember, guys, I think the last thing is you get the best out of others when you give the best of yourself. So this is something really important as well. Again, talk about community and getting back. If you're meeting up with one of your friends, your friend of me and my Andrew Connick here, one of guys I always run with in, in Ferrybank, you know, if you're meeting up with one other person, be a positive person, be a positive influence. Because remember, you get the best out of others when you're giving the best to yourself. I think of the relay teams I've been involved with, um, or you see kids in coaching, when you give bring energy and bring excitement to something, you see how much more they get from a training session. So, you know, just a little reminder to, 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 to think positive, to be positive, and um, yeah, just, just keep trying to build your best self um, in, in, in what, what you do. Be, be, be your best, be, be the best person you can be, and, 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 and watch how... Your, your life should um, get better and, and be more fulfilled from it. And that's it. Enjoy the journey. So that's my presentation. Um.